We all know how a house husband lives his life, working house chores all day. But what if the house husband is a retired gangster who disbanded his gang to marry an ordinary girl? And will his gangster nature affect his daily life? The story starts with Tatsu, a former Yakuza boss with tattoos on his whole body. He grabs a knife and starts cooking, skillfully making breakfast and a cute lunch and packing it in a box. He also takes some photos of it. Just then, his wife rushes out of the room, already late for a meeting and not having time for breakfast. She leaves the house without eating. Just when Tatsu is about to start his house chores, he realizes his wife has forgotten her lunch at home. He instantly packs the lunchbox, leaves the house in Yakuza style, and rushes to his wife's office on a bicycle. On his way, Tatsu gets stopped by two cops. Upon asking about his occupation, he tells them he is a house husband. Just then, the cops realize he is the immortal dragon, who single-handedly smashed ten of his rival group's offices in one night. Unarmed, he pulls out a discount coupon from his pocket, gives it to the cops, and leaves to complete his mission. After some time, a door-to-door -door vendor comes to Tatsu's apartment to sell knives for his company. Tatsu opens the door, and the vendor forcefully enters the apartment and starts introducing himself. However, he stops abruptly when he sees a knife and apron with red stains on it. At first, the vendor gets shocked, but in an attempt to prove himself a pro, he continues his conversation. He shows Tatsu his company's knives, and Tatsu tries them out in his Yakuza style to see whether they will be perfect for his cooking. Lately, there have been rumors about scams, so Tatsu decides to put these knives to the test by making a hamburger steak. The taste of the steak turns out outstanding, but Tatsu's face scares the vendor and he decides to leave. Next, a shopkeeper abruptly kicks out a boy named Masa from his shop. This is one of Tatsu's apprentices who was with Tatsu before his retirement. Now, he is looking for Tatsu to lead them again. Coincidentally, Tatsu is buying vegetables right in front of him. Tatsu goes inside the shop to pay the bill at the counter, and Masa follows him, but Tatsu completely ignores him. Tatsu leaves the shop and properly recycles the plastic bottles outside while Masa explains the whole story of the humiliations he bears without him. Tatsu asks Masa to let it go somewhere else and takes him to a cooking lesson meant for housewives. He cooks croquettes and Masa helps him too. All the women praise Tatsu's wonderful cooking, and Masa realizes he is not here for this. Masa grabs Tatsu's collar and starts shouting, demanding to know why he left. Tatsu tells him he quit everything and decided to become a house husband. It adds that he can't protect anything through violence. In a fit of rage, Masa knocks the plate on which Tatsu had prepared the croquettes. Tatsu beats him up, seemingly forgetting everything he said a second ago. Later, Masa cleans everything. Back home, Tatsu has identified his target, checked the route and time, and is prepared. Some members of a different gang are roaming in a car and talking about Tatsu. Just then, Tatsu crashes through their car window on his bike. Tatsu leaves his bike and runs, prompting the other two people to run after him. Tatsu enters a shopping mall with a 90% discount and orders the other two to grab discounted things. Both do as Tatsu says, but later get scolded by Tatsu because they only get one sweater, a pair of socks, and gloves. Next, Tatsu goes to a shop in his usual style and orders a popular Anon figure. The shopkeeper is initially shocked but then shifts into salesperson mode. Tatsu buys the figure and goes home. Tatsu's wife, Miku, comes home from her office job as a designer. Tatsu first puts her through a security check and then brings her a cake. It's Miku's birthday, celebrated in a new and different style. He then gives her a birthday present, the Policure Anon figure, Miku's favorite. This makes her happy until it turns out she already has it. Tatsu decides to pay the penalty, but Miku stops him by throwing him out of the window. The next day, a neighbor woman leaves her son in Tatsu's care for some time because she has urgent work. The kid is initially scared of Tatsu's look, but calms down when he eats Tatsu's big cookies. Tatsu offers to play a game with him, and the kid gets excited, only to regret it when Tatsu suggests only traditional Japanese games. Just then, the kid grabs a Polikir Anam doll, which is Miku's favorite. While playing, the kid stumbles and breaks the doll. Now Tatsu is worried because the Polikir figure is no more. Tatsu decides to take care of this in his Yakuza style. If it's dead, just bury it. He thinks no one will know, but just then, Miku arrives, and Tatsu instantly gets on his knees to apologize. The following day, Masa stumbles upon four men from another gang. He quickly googles how to fight four people alone, but these men start fighting. Just then, Tatsu arrives. He's not there for Masa, but instead is headed to another teaching class for house husbands. Masa tries to provoke Tatsu into fighting the other four, but Tatsu slaps Masa and says, do it yourself. Masa, however, doesn't understand English. The other four leave them because their boss told them not to fight with the immortal dragon. Masa again mocks the gang members as they're leaving, hiding behind Tatsu for protection. Tatsu leaves and Masa now starts admiring Tatsu for being a house husband. He decides to start following Tatsu from today and asks Tatsu to teach him the way of the house husband. Tatsu now has an apprentice. 
The next day, Tatsu and Miku go shopping. Tatsu asks the employee for white stuff, which scares her because they don't sell that kind of product. Miku then corrects him, telling the girl that Tatsu means flower. Miku insists on buying different things, but Tatsu rejects them one by one. Both argue and nearby shoppers think a Yakuza member is harassing a woman. Miku notices this and takes him somewhere else, where she tells him that people are scared of this face. He simply refuses to accept it, arguing that he gets along with his neighbors who think he's funny. Miku assumes that maybe the reason is how Tatsu dresses. They decide to buy new clothes for him. He tries different outfits, but they all look the same. In the end, it's his face that's intimidating. Miku asks him to be charming since he's now a house husband. Tatsu, having spent his whole life in fights, has no idea how to be charming. Just then, he comes to Miku with a pink apron featuring her favorite anime, Polycure. This genuinely excites Miku, and they end up buying it. Meanwhile, a blonde dude is released from jail and no one has come to pick him up. The next day, Tatsu and Masa have just finished shopping. Masa is now learning house chores from Tatsu. While going home, Tatsu advises Masa to never shop without a plan and to avoid wasting money. Masa, however, instantly orders two creeps from a nearby van. The vendor is the same blonde guy who was released from jail yesterday, Torajiro, a rival of Tatsu. Turns out, Torajiro is now homeless because Tatsu disbanded his group and became a house husband while he was in jail. Both decide to duel as a house husband and a street vendor. Torajiro makes a creep, and Tatsu makes almond jelly with fruit jam. Meanwhile, Masa's commentary is totally useless. How will they decide the winner? Both take photos and post them on Instagram. Two hours later, Tatsu gets one like, and Torajiro gets zero likes, meaning Tatsu wins with a lead of one like. Next, Tatsu and Miku go to buy a car. They see some incredibly cool cars that Miku likes, but Tatsu rejects them. Instead, Tatsu likes a pickup truck, which Miku likely doesn't favor. At last, they see a good family car, and Tatsu approves because it can fit a person in the back. They decide to take a test drive, and Tatsu checks every detail of the car. Unfortunately, the windows are not bulletproof. Tatsu is going to drive, but his imagination soon starts running wild. He suspects the front man could be a hitman from another group, and they can't go back because of another Tatsu fantasy. On their way, he imagines the old man crossing the road is also from a rival group. At last, Tatsu decides not to buy a car. The next day, Tatsu is selling things at a flea market. Two girls ask Tatsu for a cat bat, but as always, his face scares them. Why is Tatsu selling at a flea market? Let's go back a few days. Lately, Tatsu has bought many unnecessary things, so Miku asked him to sell them at the flea market. Tatsu gets a stall set up, but realizes that this business isn't easy. Just then, Tatsu's neighbors come to his stall, and he shows them his homemade things. Suddenly, Tatsu notices some men demanding that vendors pay a levy. When Tatsu asks them to stop, their boss recognizes him as the immortal dragon, and his legs start trembling. They decide to take this confrontation somewhere else. Tatsu opens his briefcase and offers them a peeler. The boss thinks he will use it to peel his nails, but Tatsu is actually selling it to them. He demonstrates some other items in the same way, causing the boss's legs to tremble even more. In the end, Tatsu gives him all the items he's shown. The next day, Tatsu goes somewhere with a suitcase on a bike while two cops spy on him from a building across the street. They follow Tatsu and soon see him meet Masa. The cops think a deal is about to happen and that Masa is the dealer. Tatsu gives Masa a white pack, and the cops decide to wait for more provable evidence. They both go to a shady back alley and enter a closed shop. The officers decide to attack, but it turns out to be a birthday party. Today is the birthday of Tatsu's landlady, and they have booked the whole calf. The cops ask about the package Tatsu gave Masa earlier, and it turns out to be basil that Tatsu grew at home. It can be used for pasta, pizza, or salad. The cops then question Tatsu about the suitcase, which holds a moist papery, a birthday gift for the landlady. Moist papery consists of moist petals preserved with salt and you're supposed to enjoy the fragrance of it. In the end, the cops join the party too. In the meantime, the same boss of four, whom Tatsu sold items to the flea market, decides to train his legs so that his knees won't tremble if he encounters Tatsu again. He even takes supplements to help. After training, he sets out to defeat the immortal dragon. They spot Tatsu coming home from shopping, but unfortunately, the boss's training goes in vain. His legs still give out. 